all the brothers who follow the rule of nobody under 15 allowed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a success and make this something that uh, allows us to get closer to him. I mean, Ya Rabbi Alameen. So inshallah, today we'll talk about one story. Um, and uh, and yeah, so let's talk about one story from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And, and we'll speak about um, his story and one part of his life that's actually pretty interesting. But before we do that, uh, we request that everybody, you know, tell, you, tell your friends, tell the older guys, you know, kids are in high school, kids are in college, invite them and bring them to the masjid. Uh, try your best to do so. And inshallah, you know, the, uh, you'll get the reward for them coming. If they learn one thing, you get the reward for them learning that. And they act on that, you get the reward for learning that as well. So let's try to invite more and more people, inshallah. And, and yeah, Ramadan is also coming up. We have like two more weeks left. So the way that it's going to go is, uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll have this week and then we'll have next week and the week after we'll have our program and then during Ramadan there'll, there'll be no program and then we'll inshallah we'll continue after Eid so that's how it's going to go so let's start uh, so Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam uh, who knows what they call Ibrahim like in English Ibrahim alayhi salam does anybody know? go ahead Abraham Abraham so when in, in school probably they speak about Prophet Abraham Christians speak they call him Abraham and Ibrahim والسلام, is that person who all three religions, all three like people of the book, Christians, Jews, and Muslims, all of them believe in him, right? To some level or some extent. They all agree that he was a prophet and he was somebody who was a man of God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him. So to some level or, or, that it all, everybody believes in him, in some level. They believe that he existed. The story of Ibrahim والسلام, is actually a very interesting story. But we're going to only talk about one part of his life. So from a young, young age, Ibrahim السلام, he was the type of person that used to like to make noise, right? And when I say making noise, I don't mean that he used to like to scream or something, no. But he used to like to flip things upside down. So when his people used to say that we believe, when they used to say that we believe in idols and that we believe in things that we created with our hands, Ibrahim السلام, used to ask the people, how can you believe in this? He used to ask them questions like, how is it possible that you guys believe in a sun? How can you believe that the sun created you? How can you make something with your own hands and then start worshipping it? That was the type of person that Ibrahim, Ibrahim السلام, or Abraham was. He used to like to make noise. He used to like to ask people and questions that they had no answers to. So his family, even up until the point, his own family, some of his own family members, they were people who did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim alayhi salam used to ask them, like, why don't you believe? Or he used to ask them questions, you know, just to get their mind thinking, like, how can you believe in this thing? Can it speak? Can it talk? Can it give you something? And what he did is actually very interesting. So every year his people, they used to, so we know, his people, they're ignorant people. Some people believed in him. Some people said, you know, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, especially his wife and his son, they were really his supporting factor. But other than that, a lot of people, they really didn't support Ibrahim alayhi salam. Especially when he was a young man. Especially when he was a young man, they didn't really trust him or believe in what he said. They used to think, you know, this guy is majnoon, he's crazy, you know, astaghfirullah. They used to say things like that to him. So the, his people, they were idol worshippers, they used to make things with their own hands, they would worship it, they thought this, was, this is our God. You know, they, just because they heard it from their parents, who heard it from their parents, who heard it from their parents, just because it was like going on like that, they thought, you know, let's believe in it too. Let's go ahead and believe in it as well. So that this was continuing and coming and coming through their generations, and then Ibrahim alayhi salam comes. So every year these people, they had a carnival. You know, they had like a festival that they used to go to. And when they used to go to this festival, so let's say we're in Carteret, right? Let's say there's a big festival in Edison. So everybody in Carteret goes to Edison. Nobody is here in the masjid, nobody's at the church, nobody's at the office, even the, everything is empty. Even the police station, everybody is gone. So the family, the friends, everybody who knew Ibrahim alayhi salam, they're going to this festival. So like the example I gave, right? It's in the next town, but everybody goes. Everybody, not one person doesn't even stay behind. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, he makes some excuse. He says, you know what? I'm gonna stay behind. You know, for, forget this carnival. I'm gonna stay behind. So he convinces his people. He's like, you know, we're, I'm gonna stay. And inshallah, we'll see what happens from there. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he stays behind. 
and he doesn't he doesn't go. And when everybody is gone, Ibrahim alayhi salam he goes to the temple. These people they had a temple, and Ibrahim alayhi salam he goes there. And when he goes to the temple, he sees the really big uh, idol that they worship, the really big thing that they made, and they worship it. He sees it, and there's next to it there's a bunch of smaller ones. So Ibrahim alayhi salam he looks at the idols. And he takes like a hammer or something and he breaks all of them. He breaks all of the small idols. So there's one big one and there's a bunch of small ones around it. So he breaks all of the small ones and but he leaves the biggest one there. And some of the ulama of tafsir, some of the scholars, they said after he broke all of them, he took the hammer or whatever he used to break it, the stick or whatever it was, and he put it in the neck of the biggest one. He put it around the neck of the biggest one idol there. So can you imagine he goes to their worship place he breaks all the small ones but he leaves the big one and then he takes the smoking gun, whatever the hammer whatever it was and he places it right around the neck of obviously they didn't have gun, I see some people smiling, they didn't have a gun but it's just a term, smoking gun, the, the smoking hammer, whatever, you know like whatever they use to, to, to uh, hurt all of the uh, idols so he puts it around the neck of the biggest one then he goes home and when he goes home, uh, he stays there and people, the people come back from the carnival or the festival after a couple of days and they say, listen, uh, what happened here? They go to the temple, they see everything is messed up. They go to the temple and they see what's going on here. Like everything is gone, everything is destroyed. Who did this? And they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to find the answer. Who messed up the idols? What happened? And then they remember, they say, you know, there was a person, his name was, his name's Ibrahim. And he's this man's son. And he always talks about our idols. He always asks questions. Why this? Why that? He always tells us things like what's going on or what's happening. He always forces us to um, pretty much, you know, go ahead and, 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 and not believe. And he didn't force them. But he used to basically ask them questions. He used to force them to think. And people who, you know, some people, they don't like to think. They just want to do whatever everyone else is doing. They don't want to think for themselves. So Ibrahim used to force them to think and they used to say, you know, he, he forces us all the time to think. He always asks us questions. He always says bad things about our gods. So maybe it was him. Let's go ask him. So they call the meeting and they tell Ibrahim, come. And Ibrahim goes and Ibrahim salam goes and they ask him, so did you do this? You know, you're always talking bad. You didn't go to the festival. You, you do this, you do that. You're always asking questions. Was it you? And Ibrahim, he looks at them and he smiles and look at the wisdom of Ibrahim salam. Somebody could say, no, it wasn't me. They could say, yeah, it was me. But look at the question he asks. Because obviously we know, how is it possible if I make this mask with my own hand and I say, this is my, my Lord. I'm the one that made the mask. How did the mask make me? It doesn't make sense. So these people, they would make the idol with their own hand and they would say, yeah, he made me. But... In reality, they were the ones that made the idol. The idol doesn't do anything for them. They can't. Uh, the only Rabb, the only creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. There's nobody else who helped Allah to, who helped Allah to make us. Allah did everything all by Himself. Allah said, Kun fayakun. Allah said, be, and it became. And that was the, that's it. That's the simple answer and the simple question and the simple answer. Who made everything? Allah did. That's it. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he could have said that. He could have said, you know, uh, why don't you do this or, or, or he could have told them you know you guys are this you guys are that but no he asked him a question he said all of the small ones are destroyed but the big one is still here and the, the, the hammer is on the neck of the big one so it looks like you know at a crime scene if you go to a crime scene and somebody people are dead and somebody has a gun in their hand who committed the crime obviously the first person is the person who has the gun if you go and, and, and you see something in your house is stolen you go outside and you see uh, one of your somebody, your neighbor, he's holding the thing that got stolen. Who stole it? Obviously, it's probably the neighbor. He has it in his hand. So Ibrahim said, look, he has the hammer around his neck. And all the small ones are destroyed. He's still there. So why don't you ask him? You think he's your God, right? You think he created you. You think he gives you risk. You, get, you think he gives you health. You think he gives you Iman. You think he gives you things. So ask him. Maybe he did it. And everybody got really angry. They're like, what? Like, are, are you okay? Do you think he can talk? And they admitted themselves that what they believe doesn't make sense. 
Because uh, if it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah and Allah gives us. So you can't ask a simple question to this uh, uh, thing that you're worshipping, to this idol, and he can't answer you. So Ibrahim said, ask him, go ahead. And they got really angry. They said, you know, you're making fun of us. And Ibrahim said, no, no, I'm not making fun of you. Ask him, go ahead. You say he's your Rabb. You said he's your creator. You said he made you. So ask him what's going on. And the people got really upset. And they, they told him, like, you know, just go away. Just get out of here. Because they felt embarrassed. They told him, they said, he can't talk. He can't walk. He can't do anything. How did he do that? And then Ibrahim salam, obviously, if, if he can't talk and he can't walk, and he can't do anything, you can't ask him a question, he can't give you an answer. So how is he your creator? How is he Allah? How is he the one who made you? If something is so useless, so useless, it can't even talk, it can't even walk, it can't do anything, it's just standing there. How can that thing make all of this earth and, and the heavens and, and, and the skies and the stars and the moons and the universe and the galaxy? It doesn't make sense. So Ibrahim asked them that question, they got really angry and they, they, they sent him away, he went home. A couple of time passes by and Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam he, he, he's still living his life, he's still you know making noise, asking people questions you know what's going on, why are you guys believing in this when the people were getting very upset and the, the, the main people of the town they met and they said you know what Ibrahim is making a big problem he's making a big issue for all of us he's forcing, he's telling people, asking people questions now they're asking us when something doesn't make sense like if a teacher tells you to do something which doesn't make sense uh, let's say one kid was fighting in class and, and the teacher said, you know, now everybody has to stay inside for recess and somebody asks the, kid, the teacher, you know, why are you doing that? that's something that doesn't make sense because of the mistake of one kid everybody has to stay indoors for recess, it doesn't make sense so the teacher the teacher's not going to answer your question the he or she is just going to be like, you know what, just be quiet, you know, go, go do your work because they have no answer, it doesn't make sense so when things don't make sense People have no answer. And when people have no answer, then they're forced so many times. There's so many people. There's these Christian uh, priests, they come on TV and they tell people, they say, you know, send us one dollar and we're gonna send you money back. But then they send you like two dollars back and then they say, okay, now send us ten dollars back. And then and, and, and they say things like, you know, if you send us this much money or you do this, you do that for us, or you buy us a car, you do this, you do that. and. Everybody knows about it, and they say, you know, we're gonna give you this. You know, your health will be good, your pat, your money will be good. You'll have a job, and this and that. And when you ask them a question, you know, how are you gonna do that for us? They just tell you, you know, don't ask questions. They tell you, don't ask questions. Islam is not like that. Islam is a, a religion where you can ask questions, but the questions have to be right. So the people got really mad. They said, you know, Ibrahim, he's asking, he's forcing people, he's asking people too many questions. He's making them think. These people are finally thinking and they got very angry so they sat, they had a meeting, they said, what should we do? And you know, when people, they have no answer to questions, they resort to violence. When somebody has no answer to a question, they start cursing you, they start behaving badly, they start doing mean things. When you ask somebody a question and they don't have an answer for you or, or, or whatever they're saying is, makes no sense or is for no reason, they start behaving bad, they resort to violence. So these people, they same thing. They resorted to violence. They said, you know what? We're going to kill him. How are we going to do it? We're going to make a big fire or we're going to throw Ibrahim in the fire. So they started their job. And they were evil people. So they had to make a propaganda. Because if somebody makes a fire now and they say, you know, let's throw Hamza in the fire and let's see what happens. Everybody's going to be like, what are you saying? Like, you know, relax, calm down. There's other ways to handle this. You can kick him out. If you don't like him, kick him out. Get rid of him. But these, and they knew that. They knew people are going to ask, what's going on? Why are you asking us questions? Why are you forcing us, you know? Or they, they knew, why are you telling us to kill Ibrahim? Like, what's happening? He didn't do anything to you. So they made a plan. And what was the plan? They said, you know what? We're going to tell everybody, if they make this fire, and they throw, help us throw Ibrahim in the fire, that our gods are going to bless them. They're going to give them, cure their sickness. They're going to give them jobs. The God is going to give them this, the God is going to give them that. That's what they told people. It got so bad, so bad that people... So they started a fire. Let's say this is the fire. They started the fire. And they told people, they say, whoever comes and throws things in to make the fire bigger and bigger, the God is going to give them good health. Whatever problem they have is going to be fixed. It got so bad. The propaganda got so bad. The fire became so big 
that they couldn't even, their plan was, we're going to make the fire, we're going to take Ibrahim, we're going to push him in, and that's it, it's going to be the end of the story, he's going to die. But the fire got so big, it got so bad, the propaganda that they spread, they said, you know, the God is going to bless you if you make the fire bigger and bigger. It got so bad, and people were so jahil, so ignorant, that even one old lady, she, she was going and she threw something in the fire. She didn't even hear who is Ibrahim. She doesn't even know who is Abraham. She doesn't even know what, what's going on. And when somebody asked her, you know, like, you know, you're an old lady, you're a booty ma, like, what do you have to do with this fire? Like, it doesn't make sense. Why are you here? And she answered, she said, you know, I'm sick, I'm old. And I heard if I put something in the fire, uh, I'm going to become good again. I'm going to become young and healthy again. So that's how bad it was. That's how bad the situation got. There was so much fire that they couldn't even walk next to it. So then the people, the, the, the people of the town, the main people, the important people, I guess like the, the, the shura of the town, I guess, or the group of people who decide the matters in the town, they say, you know, so first the problem was the idols broke. And then the problem was, you know, now we have to find a way to kill Ibrahim. How, then the problem was, how are we going to make the fi fire bigger? And now the problem is the fire is too big. So when you do evil things, this is what happens. You think that you can keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. No one's going to catch you. Nothing is going to happen. No, it's wrong. One day it's going to catch up to you. So what they had to do, they had to make like a catapult. Uh, that's the easiest way to explain it. They had to make something where they're tie Ibrahim up. They're going to put him in and they're going to launch him. They're going to shoot him up. So that was the plan. I'm not sure how to describe it. But basically like a catapult. You know, you tie somebody up. And their plan was we're going to tie him up. And we're going to pull him back, and we're probably going to let him go, and he's going to go flying into the fire. So they made it, they built it, the fire got so big, old ladies, young kids, men, women, everybody's going and throwing things. They think it's going to give them money, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And they do all of these things, and then the fire is too big. So they prepare the, the thing to throw Ibrahim alayhi salam into the catapult. And I'm sure we've seen in cartoons and video games and stuff like that what, what a catapult is and, and how it works and things. So basically they tie him up, they tie his arms, they tie his feet, they tie him into the thing and they, and, and they make a big event of it. They call everyone, they say, okay, everybody come. Everybody in the town was there. We're going to throw him in the fire now. We're going to kill him. We're going to get rid of him. All of our problems will be fixed. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's tied up, they put him on the catapult, and while he's in the catapult, uh, on it, while he's on that, this thing to be thrown into the fire, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah save me, oh Allah save me, and look at his iman, imagine being thrown into a fire, imagine, imagine even going close to a fire, and these people, they have such hatred, they hate you so much, that they want to kill you, you would want to leave right away, you would not stay, but still Ibrahim salam stayed. You would not want anything to happen to you, but still Ibrahim salam he was there. You would probably be screaming and crying and yelling and doing this and that. But the Iman of Ibrahim salam, when he's about to be thrown into a fire, what is he doing? He's making dua. He's making dhikr. He's asking Allah, Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, make things easy for me. So much so, so much so, that when they, they shot him, they threw him off the um, off the thing that they made. They threw him, and Ibrahim Alaihissalam is flipping in the air like a football or something. And and you know he's just going and going, and he's about to go to the fire. When he reaches the top, so you know when if it's something here and we launch it. So if I throw this up like this, you see it went in a circle, right? It went on the tip, it went to the highest level, and then it went down. So when Ibrahim Alaihissalam they they throw him, they throw him, they throw him, throw him. He reaches the top. Jibreel comes to him and Jibreel says, should I help you? Should I make things easy for you? Should I do something? And Ibrahim alayhi salam says, no. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for me. He says, Allah is enough for me. Can you imagine an angel coming to help you? An angel coming to help you and you say, no. If somebody normal comes to help us, we say, yeah, yo, come, let, let's do it together, it's going to be easier for me. Something simple like your homework, your, your friend calls you, but, yo, you need help with your homework, I got the answers. You say, yeah, but imagine being thrown into a fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's at the top, now there's nowhere else to go but down. It's like a roller coaster, it's just going to go down now, but it's a million times worse, he's about to go down into a fire. Jibreel comes, he says, should I help you? Should I do something? 
Should I make it easy? Should, what should I do? And Ibrahim says, No, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakeel. Allah Ta'ala is enough for me. And this was so beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The, the dua that he made, the dhikr that he did, and this statement that he made, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakeel, that Ya Allah, you are enough for me. I don't need anything else. I don't need anybody else's help. I don't care who comes to ask me. I don't care who comes to save me. I don't care what happens. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, you are enough for me. I don't care about anything else or anyone else. Oh Allah, you wanted this to happen. This is happening. This is enough for me. Whatever happens, Ya Allah, I accept it. And then Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is going in the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he commanded the fire. Remember, everything is the creation of Allah ta'ala. Everything is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The leaves on the trees, they don't fall unless Allah t- lets them fall. The leaves on the trees can't grow. The plants in your backyard won't grow. The grass on your front yard, the grass in your backyard, the grass on the streets, it doesn't grow until Allah Ta'ala lets it grow. You do not grow up. You do not get taller until Allah lets it grow. You grow taller. The wind does not blow until Allah lets the wind blow. The rain doesn't fall until Allah lets the rain fall. And the drops of the rain it's not like Allah is just opening something and all of the water is coming. No, Allah is telling the rain how many drops you have to fall. Where is the rain going to fall? How is the rain going to fall? Is the rain going to fall on Hamza's head? Is the rain going to fall on, on, on Harris's, Harris's um, coat? Is the rain going to fall on Babur Bai's car? Where is the rain going to go? Allah describes all of those things. Allah tells the rain, you're going to go here, you're going to go here, you're going to do this. And just like that, Allah controls the fire as well, the heat of the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told the fire, He said, Allah, this is in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya. It's around verses, I think, 60 to like 70. Around these verses, you will find the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah ta'ala tells the fire, Allah says, So remember, Ibrahim alayhi salam, He goes to the top. Jibreel comes, Ibrahim says, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil, Allah is enough for me. Ibrahim alayhi salam is going, he's going, he's going. And then Allah ta'ala commands the fire, Allah says, Ya now. Oh fire, become cool. Become cool. Was and peaceful. Ibrahim upon Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So the fire was commanded that if Ibrahim comes in you, that when Ibrahim comes in you, that when Ibrahim is in you, that you have to be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. If Allah Ta'ala said, Ya nab uni barudan ala Ibrahim, become cool. You know, cold, when something is cold. When it's snowing outside, if you go and you sit in the snow, maybe okay, you make a snow angel, you could, uh, last time last time there was a blizzard, I made some snow angels as well, and you know, you can sit there for two minutes, three minutes max, after that it's gonna be too cold, and you have to get up and run inside and start warming your hands up, right? So if Allah Ta'ala said, Ya nam kuni bardan ala Ibrahim, become cool, become cold for Ibrahim, it would be too cold for Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Allah Ta'ala said, Ya nam kuni bardan wa salaman. Cool and peaceful, nice and easy, like a nice breeze, like, like the breeze that we have today or something. Become nice and easy upon Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the fire, the fire became cool and peaceful on Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And Ibn Abbas, I believe it was Ibn Abbas, one of the Sahabi radiallahu anhum, one of the friends, the companions of the Prophet, he said that when he was describing this story, he said, that the fire became, that listen to what Allah said. Allah said three things. He, he told the fire, He said, become cool, become peaceful, not for everyone, not in the whole majlis, not in the whole gathering, become cool and peaceful. What? Ala Ibrahim, only for Ibrahim. And remember, we said that Ibrahim alayhi salam, they tied his hands, they tied his feet. Ibn Abbas or one of the companions, I believe it was one of the companions, he was describing the, um, it was one of the companions, I'm not sure if it was Ibn Abbas, but it was one of the companions, he said that because Allah Ta'ala said only on Ibrahim, the rope on the hands and on the feet of Ibrahim alayhi salam, if you put a rope in fire, the rope is going to break. They were broken, the rope was gone, but the fire could not touch Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So the fire was only cool, only peaceful for Ibrahim. But for everybody and everything else, the fire was still hot. And it was still, it was still like the fire of Jahannam. It was hot, it was blazing, you know, and nothing could save it. So imagine that. Ibrahim is in a fire. He's in a fire, a big fire. A fire so big that 
They had to make something to throw him into the fire. They couldn't go and push him in. They couldn't even walk next to it. He's in the fire and the rope that was on him, that rope went away, but nothing happened to the body or to the hair or to the jism of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is the miracle of Allah Ta'ala that when you make dua to Allah and you say things like Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil that Allah is perfect enough for me, that Allah is perfect and He's enough for me, that I don't need anything else except for Allah. And when you believe it and you feel it in your heart and in your life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in such levels that even, even if you're in the middle of a war zone, you're in the middle of a fire, you're in the middle of a shooting, whatever the case is, Allah Ta'ala will protect you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will be there for you. And I'm sure we've seen these videos, they are all over YouTube and Facebook. You can see videos of big, big monster trucks, 18-wheeler trucks, right, that carry tons and tons of, of, of saman, of, of, uh, of inventory, that they're, they're crashing, but there's a person standing right here. And the whole truck crashes, the whole truck is destroyed, but that person is still alive. So many times this happens, so many times. We probably have seen near death, death experiences so many times on, on the highways. The car is destroyed, the car is gone, the car catches fire, but the people inside the car, they're still alive. Why? Because this is from the karam and from the fadl and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can do anything that He pleases. And look what He did for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. That He's thrown in a fire, but still Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, He's still alive. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Ibrahim alayhi salam, not a single hair on his body was touched, but the ropes around his hand and on his feet, they were burned and they were gone. So this, my dear brothers in Islam, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, for us to believe in Him and to believe in Him on such a level that even whatever we have in our life happening, whatever is going wrong, whatever is happening, even if it's good, even if it's good, we have to believe Hasbunallah wa Yaman wa Wakil that our money, our health, our wealth, that's not gonna do anything for us. That no matter how much money you have, tomorrow Allah can take it away from you. What only thing that matters is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can have as much as blink as you want, as much as cars as you want, as much as as much as a uh, drip as you want, as much as kicks, whatever you want, you can have as much as you want it. But the only thing that matters, the only thing that will satisfy us, the only thing that's enough for us. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Allah and the love of His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I guess we can now go ahead and, uh, and, and cool down and ourselves and take some lessons and, and hear from you guys and then inshallah we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll end. So anybody have any reflection or what we learned today or anything of that nature? When am I going to get big? When am I going to be able to do this? When am I going to get a car? When am I going to do this? When am I going to do that? When am I going to get a job? When am I going to finally go to college? This, that, blah, blah, blah. But we had to trust in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it's time, it's going to happen. Bef before the time, it could never happen. Allah ta'ala could, could have made the fire cool and peaceful for Ibrahim before he even went there. And, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did it when it was the time to do it. So I guess that's one of the lessons. Always have iman. Why? Because Allah's plan, wa makahu wa makar Allah, wallahu khayrun makirin. We plan, you plan, I plan, everybody plans. Wamakar uh, Allah, but Allah plans as well. Wallahu khairun makirin, and Allah Taala is the best of planners. So now we'll open up the floor, inshallah. Anybody who has some lessons.